Welcome back, super friends and super family. I am Thor, your friendly neighborhood god of Thunder. Today I'm reacting to Catch Me If You Can. So continuing, obviously, a bunch of Steven Spielberg movies. Very excited to be watching this one. I have seen this movie before a long time ago, in case you're only interested in first-time watches. So, But this is just one I wanted to kind of revisit now that I'm older and just... Give my thoughts on it, see what I remember about it, give my commentary. I remember really enjoying it. And Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Spielberg, it's kind of a win. Not to mention Christopher Watkins is in this, right? Yeah, but just excited to rewatch this one. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, the full reaction is up on Patreon next week. Steven Spielberg movie reaction will also be out next week. If you want to subscribe to the channel to see more reactions like this, let's get into today's movie. Catch me if you can. <laughs> I do know that this movie is based on a true story. I'm not sure how accurate the facts are, but if anyone knows and wants to let me know, feel free to comment down below. Is this kind of opening like a throwback to old thrillers or James Bond movies? I feel like it's a homage to an older style of filmmaking. It's really cool. All right, what a great title card. Great. Martin Sheen. Who is Martin Sheen in this? And we have a chase sequence in just the opening titles. How cool is that? That felt like a Breaking Bad shot, you know? that perspective you do not pass him anything to the <laughs> i mean who is this kid you think he's like hannibal lecter the way they're treating him it's really a testament to how difficult it was to catch him in the first place <laughs> that says everything you need to know about the living quarters when you need the umbrella inside I don't know if that look from Tom Hanks was pity or admiration or both. I mean, he is in horrible shape. He wasn't faking that part. Well, you put on a good show for the other inmates, you know? Gentlemen, as of this moment, I am that second mouse. <laughs> I mean, you can see the inspiration, like how much his father means to him. Someone's had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> I mean, it is such a wonderful feeling as a kid or an adolescent to see your parents in love and getting along. I wonder if that the wine on the carpet is a little bit of symbolic foreshadowing of a little trouble in paradise, perhaps. Why is it snowing? Do you have a black suit? Oh, I overslept again. Huh? I not only did he make you breakfast, he's feeding you breakfast in bed. Yeah. There's a funeral this afternoon. Military funeral. Planes flying overhead. Twenty-one gun salute. I mean, his dad is a regular Saul Goodman, and you see where he learns the power of persuasion. For dinner. On my son's 16th birthday, we're not going to eat pancakes. I mean, I like pancakes for dinner. Oh, yeah? Do you know what room 17 French is? Yeah, it's... <laughs> what a loser. There's always the bullies in the school, you know? You can't have a movie school without those bullies. Oh, I remember this scene. The confidence to do something like this. Excuse me, people, if I need to ask again, I'm going to write up the entire class. Take your seats! <laughs> Not only is he a substitute teacher, he's hardcore, too. In front of the class here, and read <laughs> conversation number five. He makes his own karma. Look at this. Only Leo. I came all the way from, from Dixon. Oh, I always sub for Roberto. Excuse me, why aren't you reading? Not <laughs> this poor lady, meanwhile. <laughs> I regret to inform you that for the past week, 
Frank has been teaching Mrs. Glasses. A whole, he got away with that for a whole week? That's just insane. That's just insane. With the real sub. Your son held a teacher parent conference yet. <laughs> How far was he gonna take it? Did he even think it through? That's insane. Mom hands you a note to Miss School. The first thing you do is you, you fold it and you put it in your pocket. Pro tip. Pro tip from a con man helping you out there. I mean, as upset as you must be with your son, there's got to be a party that's a little bit proud. He could pull something like that off. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Jack Barnes? From the club. Hello. He can buy looking for your father. Come on, he's not a child. He's not that naive. Oh. Well, thanks, Frank. Uh, that's the president's pin. Wonder how that fell off. Are you hungry, Frankie? I'll make you a sandwich. I mean, and she's acting so obviously guilty on top of everything. Oh. Do you need some money, Frankie? Really? You're going to try to bribe him now? Bribe him by his silence? I promised you were going to quit. I love the way that was framed too, like just that single like wider shot and it just panned back and forth to see the mother in the background, but it never cut to a different angle. Mom, mom. He's like, I'm home, I'm gonna announce it loudly in case you're having an affair again. Hey, hey, hey. You, you stay away from me, you hear me? Holy, a totally different guy. Follow me into the next room, okay? They're all waiting for you. Wait, what? Paragraph right here. This is important because it states who you are going to live with. I mean, how do you expect a kid to choose, you know, to make a decision, just like throw that on him? Name there. It's as simple as that. And don't look so scared. How can you not be scared, man? It's not a test. There's no wrong answer. I really like the inner cuts of him running while that conversation is happening. It really puts you in the emotional state that he is. Sense, sir. Is it okay if I write you a check? And that's the beginning, the first time, right? It's the best room the FBI can find. <laughs> they only give them so much budget. Where am I gonna go? You're a goddamn kid. Go home. How do you explain that you come from a broken home? You know? Hmm. And just like that, you get some cash. Ashley? You know what I found on the sidewalk out there? Careful bribing someone who works at a bank. Must have slipped right off your neck. Uh-oh. <laughs> Please, I mean, it's my midterm next week and my books are stolen. <laughs> they don't care about the sob stories. <laughs> we are not allowed to take checks from people we don't know. Jeez. It's cool that it's not, you know, super easy. It's not like he can just do one thing and then get all this money, you know? He's going to have to be smart about how he does this. What do you think, Angelo? With the ladies are wrapped this afternoon. <laughs> He's like, dang, being an airline pilot is like being a star. The other one is their FAA license. And that looks just like this. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering this valuable information. Company at 9th and Broadway. They are uniform supplier. I'll tell Mr. Rosen you're coming. <laughs> very smooth. Very smooth. Sorry, uh, no checks, no cash. You'll have to fill in your employee ID number and then. Oh, shoot. Take it out in your next paycheck. Even better. Oh, I guess that actually makes it easier, right? For a second, I thought it was going to get busted, but how could they check? Man has nothing to fear, so I'm trying my best not to be afraid. <laughs> That's a long-winded saying of being way of saying I'm a con man now. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Were pilots respected more back in the day? You know, I feel like they're not looked at at least in that sense now. I always do. Excuse me. Oh shoot. I manage this branch. I want to thank you for coming in and using our institution. Well, it's a pleasure to meet. He doesn't recognize him. You're very fortunate. Is it alright if I write you a check for the room? No problem, sir. Great. 
Oh shoot, is he out of checks now? Get in touch with Joanna Carlton from the 10th grade. Tell her I'm sorry that I could not take her to the junior prom. <laughs> Oh, for real? <laughs> That's so smart, actually. Is there some irony putting your forged check in a Bible? You have the most beautiful eyes I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's just, it's that easy. That way she won't look too closely. <laughs> so which one's the jump seat again? <laughs> have a nice <laughs> Nice try. Puddles for the next few months trying to earn my keep running leapfrog for the weak and weary. <laughs> he, he's learned the business vernacular. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thankfully, she is there to help him out. Would you like a drink after takeoff? Milk. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> this is his first flight, right? Family can fly for free. So tell mom to pack a bags and buy a new swimsuit because I'm taking- Look how happy his father is too, hearing about his career, even though all of it's not true. Marcy, did you drop this? It works for cons and for flirtation. No! Uh, no. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, that is one of the funniest edits ever, from no to yes. <laughs> He's got some swagger now. Welcome to Miami Mutual Bank. How may I help you? Elizabeth Beggs. This has got to be one of her earlier roles, right? I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great reaction. Is that what every girl is like when Leo asks them out? <laughs> Mixing business and pleasure. Next slide, please. Uh, the remote thing is broken. You have to do it by hand. <laughs> Technical failures. I can relate. Ship that check off to its corresponding branch. Carl, for those of us who are unfamiliar with bank fraud. AKA me and the rest of the audience. Which means our unsub can stay in one place, paper the same city over. What is unsub short for? Some uniform thing. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, how could he not be proud, right? Salad fork. It's a fancy restaurant, you know? Your son has really moved up in the world, okay? The keys to a 1965 Cadillac DeVille. Convertible. Brand new debt. I mean, how many kids, if they came into money at that young of an age, would be so considerate to buy their dad a car? The IRS found out I was driving around in a new coupe. They confiscated it. Took the train here, Frank. I'm taking the train home. And it really shows the little kid mindset he has because he is so young in reality, you know, young Frank that he's, you know, says like, drive it over to your mom's. Like he really just wants his parents to be back together. It's not what you think. I'm just a co-pilot. Also, another way of saying I'm not even a real pilot at all, but. The rest of us really are I don't understand that line. What did he mean by that? So damn big. I thought I was going to shoot my tits off. Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> That's gotta be the best knock knock joke out there. <laughs> we go with you, Carl. You just keep your eyes open, do your job, and buy both a good humor bar. A good humor bar? What is that? <gasps> the right man. Okay. FBI. It's gonna be a more interesting day at work for you, okay? Look out the window. My partner's walking him to the car as we speak. Look. <laughs> oh, perfect timing with helping the old guy. <laughs> hey, Murph. Yeah, call the LAPD again. I don't want people walking through my crime scene. <laughs> Your wallet. You hang on to it for a minute. I trust you. I mean, imagine coming up with that plan and pulling off a performance like that. 
<laughs> Just took a second. Think about it a little bit. <laughs> Not your brightest moment there. It was stupid. I made a stupid mistake. Forget about it. Are they all eating ice cream bars to comfort themselves for missing him? Around the country posing as a Pan Am pilot. There's a column about him in the paper today. Look at that. You're a celebrity, bro. Newspaper loves this clown. Call him the James Bond of the sky. Was that really the nickname for the real Frank? Because what a nickname, man. Now you sure this is the suit, right? It's the exact suit he wore in the movie. I mean, I feel like everyone wants to be James Bond. Every guy, at least, at some point in their life. It's one of those little foreign sports cars that he drives. Meanwhile, from the glamorous life of James Bond sleeping with beautiful models, he's stuck in a laundromat. <laughs> How much would you pay me for the entire night? He's like, How many checks would I forge? A thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> That's gotta be the, like, sexiest negotiation for prostitution I've seen. <laughs> 400. And you give me that check. Even better. <laughs> big mistake. Big mistake. Only take cash. You just paid him 400 for the night. <laughs> oh, that's rough. <laughs> Imagine if it had been a spider suit. <laughs> she doesn't even say a word. No apology. Nothing. All right, this is like a, you know, Death Note, L talking to Light moment. The truth is, I knew it was you. Now, maybe I didn't get the cuffs on you, but I knew. Did you? Did you know? I feel like you were tricked. Nobody can keep their eyes off the pinstripes. <laughs> the Yankees win because they have Mickey Mantle. <laughs> One way or another. It's a mathematical fact. It's, it's like Vegas. The house always wins. The expression on his face, I think he knows that he's right. It is inevitable. You have no one else to call. <laughs> oh. I'm behind all of it. That's really what he is. A lonely, scared kid. Playing with the Golden Giants. I've got them all. What are you talking about? Barry Allen. The Flash. The Flash. But kid, kid, kid. What a pseudonym, you know? You mean like the comic book? Yeah, the comic book. When he's not the Flash. It's the same Barry Allen. This is why a pop culture education can actually be very helpful. He's cutting checks all over the country. Well, why New York? The Yankees. He's oh, that's true. That's true. That's a big hint. My husband, Jack, is a lawyer. What about your first husband? Oh, dang. They actually got married. It was more than just an affair. You filled out a missing persons report for a runaway juvenile by the name of Frank Abagnale Jr. <laughs> this poor dude is just, he's just worried about how much food he can get here. <laughs> They scared me to death because my son made a little mistake. <laughs> oh yes, I have his old yearbook. That's the only picture you have of your son, the yearbook? What about all the family photos? Okay. That was cool. I like that triple zoom before the close-up on his face at the recognition. The church now. Just tell me how much he owes and I'll pay you back. So far it's about 1.3 million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just a hobby of forgery, it's a full-time career in forgery, ma'am. James! James! Please! Just stay away from the hi-fi system, alright? Hi-fi system? Is that like the old stereo? My head she's fell into the conversation pit! <laughs> As she slides drunkenly down. Dr. Blair, Dr. Blair, Dr. And this is a baby Amy Adams, man. This has got to be one of her first breaks. If I asked you to check on the status of my friend Lance Applebaum, that you could do that for me in a second. Now, he's obviously doing this to get what he wants, but I also think, like, he's being empathetic in a genuine way. You have a pretty smile. 
<laughs> I'm a doctor. <laughs> Her smile, man. Her acting is like so natural. Born in Children's Hospital. Well, that's a pretty impressive resume, Dr. Connors. I mean, who hasn't, you know, stretched some things on their resume before, honestly? In the past, they've always let me choose my own nurses. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Strong. Nurse Brown. Someone's in love. Food requirements. What do you estimate the degree and extent of the burns can be? <laughs> Literally getting his education from the television. I mean, how did they not do background checks back in the day? It's just crazy you could get away with this much. You need to You notice something different? <laughs> you notice anything different about me, Doctor? You got your braces off. <laughs> She's so excited. Oh I'm sorry. I love having the thunder like go off right when like their emotions escalate too, you know? <laughs> Do you really think I have to go? Good for you for keeping a level head under the circumstances. And good thing he combed his hair. Oh, wow. Fractured tibia about five inches below patella. Hmm. <laughs> he grabs it and just holds that up against his face. <laughs> well, you don't seem to have much need for me. Carry on. As you were. <laughs> I blew it, didn't I? <laughs> Why not concur? <laughs> this poor dude. He's going to be thinking about that moment for ages. Fake ID and enlisted in the Marine Corps. He's over in Vietnam right now. Good for him. Good for him trying to cover for his son. I like that, honestly. Talk. Here's my number. Oh, dang it. Dang it. There's a paper trail. What if you're engaged to a doctor? Will that change anything? What? I mean, how sweet is it that he hears that problem and immediately he just proposes? It reminds me of like the shot in E.T. they have tracking the keys, but there we have with the three guns. Frank, would you like to say grace? <laughs> Improvise, bro. Improvise. Come on. <laughs> Two of us fell into a bucket of cream. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Not your average uh, prayer before meals. Frank, have you decided which hospital you want to work at here in New Orleans? Well, um... Well, that looks like a New Orleans feast, all right. Heck, they sure do feed you well in the South. Why not try my hand at pediatrics? <laughs> oh, you're just full of surprises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the weight behind his agreement there. Talk about full of surprises. Good acting. What was the name of his little dog? I'm sorry, uh, the dog was dead. Was that just a lucky guess? Like, how could he know? Yeah. <laughs> what would I have to do to take the bar here? <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Connors. Thank you. All right, talk about visual storytelling. We don't need an exposition scene or an establishing shot. Spielberg can do it in one with a couple of pans, and we know exactly what's happening. You may have that at clear, and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do next? Tell your knock-knock joke? <laughs> I'm going to figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> How many of those did Tom Hanks have to eat for this scene as well? Just curious, was it a one take? Did we spell it right? Sure did. Congratulations. I mean, he is just really working at all these like high status professions. Airline pilot, now a lawyer after your doctor was just wasn't good enough. This is a preliminary hearing. There is no... <laughs> Jury. 
It's just me. <laughs> what in the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, still got a few things to learn. I mean, this is really at the heart of his motivation for everything. What he wants, what drives him, his desire to have a happy family, what was taken from him as a child. Just one look at you, my heart How sweet is it though that them, like how long have they been married? Who knows, but they're like literally doing the dishes together after dinner and dancing. Does it get more romantic than that? I'll make them chase me for the rest of their lives. <laughs> what a beautiful silhouette shot. Dad, why don't you call her right now? Here. Dad, just call her. Call her from- It's not that simple, man. It's just not. <laughs> They're ready this time. They're ready. Uh, I want it to be over. You can't make a truce with the FBI. But it does show how tired he is of running. You can't change him. Why not? She thinks he's Connors. He loses a name, he loses a girl. Oh, that's a good point. It's a really good point, of course. <laughs> the lights are a sign of bad things to come. Yeah, all we need to do is see those shoes, honestly, and we know who it is. Much trouble. I'd like to meet the groom. Is there a problem? Yes, there is a very big problem. It doesn't matter. My name is Frank Connors, right? That's who I am with you. But, but we, we all have secrets. <laughs> we all have secrets, but not everyone is completely a con man with the secret identity. Frank? You're not a loose friend? <laughs> That's the one she's amazed at? <laughs> Tell me your name. Brenda, we can live anywhere we want. But you have to trust me, Brenda. I mean, how can you? Oh, that's a clue. That's a clue that it's him, though. Frank. William Abagnale Jr. I really think that his feelings towards Brenda are 100% sincere and genuine. Just a little too late. Right, and the placement of that mirror is just so perfect so we can have an unbroken shot and still catch his reaction. Oh, that one dude was way too obvious. They would it would have worked without that one guy. And you can't really blame Brenda. I I don't think so at all. I mean, I'm sure her parents are involved in this whole thing. All right, this place is just crawling with agents. He's used it before, he knows the layout. I talked to Miami police, they've offered us 50 uniform cops and two ships. I mean, how many men do they have on him? These eight young ladies will accompany me on a two-month public relations tour through Europe. That's like a two-month paid vacation for work, right? Per hour, at an altitude of 300 feet. All my bags are packed. <laughs> Hers was the best answer, honestly. It's like the reverse Hunger Games. You really want your name chosen for this one. Come fly with me, let's fly. Oh, this is a perfect song choice, honestly, too. <laughs> oh, it's literally the perfect cover. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny that he's literally right behind him. <laughs> you were saying about not getting humiliated again, bro? I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. Sir, we're gonna let him get away. No, Carl, you let him get away. Oof. The responsibility is all on you, man. Name of the village, Mr. Fox. Mount Rashad. Oh, he did. He did. He was taking good notes. Imagine if he hadn't. I 
that is such a cool way to have like background music the choir from the open church door so we get a little bit of like ambient christmas music don't worry frank i'll have you extradited back to the united states don't worry it's like he actually is concerned for his well-being despite the fact that he's been chasing him for all these years and he's a criminal you know i think that there's some real meaning in his character the fact that he told frank the truth in that moment and that he wouldn't lie to him I mean, I'm assuming that's how his father really died in real life, because that's just so tragic, you know. Uh-oh. Like, there's not many places he could go. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Literally crawling down a toilet after him. <laughs> it's like, do they pay you enough to do this, man? I mean, it's like she really has moved on. It's like this is the real moment he's ready to surrender when he sees. I don't know. It's like it's like losing your childhood innocence and happiness and. And strongly that you be kept in isolation for the entirety of that sentence. Isolation is that part necessary? Why would you need that just for what he pulled off? I don't understand. He's not like a threat or a physical danger. Merry Christmas, Frank. He's got a sense of humor. Between that and his knock-knock joke, he's a pretty funny guy. I mean, banks, he always use hand stamps for the dates, see? They get used over and over again, so you always get one. A real pro can pick up on all the clues. Go first. Thanks. It's like, it's like bringing in Hannibal Lecter for help to catch a serial killer, except a much less uh, dark version. It's some kind of a, you know, some kind of a drafting ink. You know, the kind you get at a stationary store. <laughs> he's like, see, I told you, I told you. It's almost like he's showing off his son who's like really talented. Hi, I'm Frank Abagnale. I'm supposed to start work here today. His first legitimate job. He's like, do you know how many hours we labor trying to get you? Every day, Frank, till we let you go. I mean, still way better than a cell, right? It's a desk job, which is a form of prison, but not literal prison. <laughs> you have plenty to do. Hard to break those old habits, huh? Maybe a little bit nervous about that bet. Sorry. He's like, dang it, I was hoping it was someone else. I don't care that you're late. I studied for two weeks and I passed. Is that the truth, Frank? He's a genius, okay? Well, if it were me, you know, I'd call the bank first, I'd check out the balance. Sure I mean, it's so, like, what a great way, though, to, like, channel his skills despite the crimes he committed as a kid for something useful and constructive, because he is so smart and competent. I really do want to look up, like, how accurate this movie is to the real events, because some of the stuff was just insane. Dang, I didn't realize Carl was a real person, too. All right, so that is Catch Me If You Can. Uh, I mean, I, I love this movie. I really, really do. There's just so much to admire. I mean, it's, it's an entertaining story on so many levels. I mean, you have the classic, like... You know, it has that entertainment similar to a show like Better Call Saul where you see, like, those cons going on. You see these crazy things. And it's done in such a comedic way, you know. Leo DiCaprio, Frank just had such a confidence. And I mean, obviously this is the movie, so things are, are exaggerated. You know, it's not exactly how things work in real life, but every once in a while you hear stories about con men pulling off these crazy things, convincing employees. I feel like I heard a story of someone walking in, pretending they're a manager at a Walmart and getting the employees to give him like tons of money when he completely didn't even work there. You just, you hear things like that. It just, it's a testament to the power that someone's, um, 
you know, someone who acts like they know what they're doing, who's very self-assured and like the, you know, like the dad was saying, you know, has that the pinstripes, right? It's like that appearance. If you look the part, you have the the uniform and your presence is strong enough, you can convince a lot of people of a lot of different things. There's a great movie I saw a long time ago. I forget what it is, but it's also based off true events. It's more of a, a much more serious side of these types of things. It's about someone who would call like fast food restaurants and convince the employees to just do these crazy, crazy things. Like got this girl to like do it. I'm blanking on the name of the movie. If I remember it, I'll put it in the edit, but it's a, uh, it's based off a true story too. But it's one of those things like similar to this in a much different tone, you know, you're watching all these crazy things going on. You're like, could you really convince people to do this? And it's, it's surprising how much you can, which is why, like I said, I'm, I'm curious how much of these events are the true story of the real Frank and how much of it is just exaggerated for the movie. But what really works for this for me for the movie I mean the performances I think are just absolutely outstanding this is one of my favorite Leonardo DiCaprio performances and I think Tom Hanks is perfect but what I just love about the story is how Frank you know he's not this slick cool con man tricking everybody like a badass I mean he is cool and, and the, but fundamentally he's just a kid and so many times throughout, you really see that, you know, whether it's him trying to act like James Bond or, you know, the fact that his alias is named after a comic book superhero. But even more so, like the time that you see with the family, that's really the heart and soul, the emotion of the movie. And to me, the way I interpret it, you know, in the film is that that's really what Frank's motivation is. You know, here he is, this kid, you know, who so much he had this great relationship with his parents and this beautiful home. And then that was shattered, you know, when his wife, uh, when his mom has an affair and then their parents, you know, get divorced and separated, you know, that's so difficult you know, for someone who's young and fully doesn't understand everything. And especially when, you know, you're so, you, you, you grew up your whole life thinking that, you know, your parents loved each other forever. And this was a committed, beautiful thing for that to leave. And then to see, you know, the financial struggles, I think Christopher Walken did a phenomenal job, you know, portraying this dad who, you know, has, has issues with the IRS, has money struggles, and, you know, you really see in his performance how he's trying to put on this brave face and not, you know, trying to shield his young son who he loves dearly from, you know, maybe the embarrassing realities of their financial situation and things that he's ashamed of and trying to keep up appearances for that sake. And just I, I think that the, the scene is so powerful, one of my favorites in the whole movie, where he finds out that his parents are getting divorced and he just runs away. And the way that that's acted and edited, just everything about it is so beautiful. And it's sad. It's so, it's so sad. You know, here he is, this kid running away. And, and to me, that's really why he's running. You know, he's running because he's trying to run away from the pain of his broken home. You know, and leading right up into that final moment where he escapes on the airline. And I also think it's kind of meaningful that he hears the news of his father's tragic death. And, you know, he he immediately goes to like, I, I think he's grieving. I don't think that is like fake. Like he's completely a sociopath about it. His emotions are real, but then he uses that opportunity to try to escape. I think that kind of sums up the psychology of his character where he kind of channels his denial and his grief and those sad things going on with his family life and his personal life and uses it, you know, to kind of break the law in a way. But I just think like it's so critical to make the protagonist likable as well, you know, because here he is pulling off these forgeries and things like that and he is breaking the law and you do know he needs to be stopped. Like, you know, Carl is just doing his job. I, you understand completely where he's coming from. But at the same time, like you see how pure and childlike the intentions of Frank are. So it's, it's hard not to root for him in an emotional sense, at least for me. And I think that just makes it the whole dynamic like really interesting and really works so well because it's like a cat and mouse game where you're kind of rooting for both sides. And there's also like a, a tragic – a tragic story of a broken home underneath everything. I also love the lighting on 
of this whole movie. I would bet, I don't know, I haven't looked it up beforehand, but I would bet this is Robert Richardson, who is one of my favorite cinematographers of all time. But there was so much, the, the clue for me is the rim lighting. There was so much gorgeous just rim lighting, and this is probably nerdy film stuff that most people don't care about, so sorry. But I'm pretty sure it's Rob Richardson, who is a phenomenal, phenomenal at his craft. There are so many sequences that were just gorgeously lit and framed really beautifully, which of course Spielberg should get some credit for that too. And then I also think this is a great soundtrack from John Williams. I, re I really think it's a different kind of tone. It's, it's a little bit whimsical and playful and it feels like a throwback. I don't really know any of the technical terms for music, so I'm not going to pretend to, but just how it makes me feel listening to it. It, it sounds very different, kind of outside of the box for a lot of John Williams soundtracks, but I think it's it very, very appropriate for this. This movie. I, I also just like the angle too. Like this, this movie is it's a dramedy, right? Like it's it's serious and there's a lot of heart and emotion and there is this whole story of this guy pulling off these crazy cons, but it's also really funny. Like there are a lot of just like fun sequences throughout this movie as we follow along the journey. And I just, I don't know, I appreciate that. I like the balance of the humor and the drama. And then just to kind of wrap up the whole story at the end, I really, I really like how and like I said, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is how it actually played out. I'm sure it's romanticized from reality, what really happened. But I like how ultimately, you know, Carl let Frank decide for himself. It's kind of like, you know, fears, overcoming your fears in a way. I feel like you can have someone help you overcome your fears, but ultimately you have to do it on your own. You have to decide that you want to confront your fears. In a similar way, I think for Frank, his kind of arc and journey, like he's running away, he's running away from pain, from fear himself, and he's caught, you know, he's forced by the law and Carl is rooting for him to kind of turn his life around. But ultimately, you know, it's Frank who has to decide, okay, I'm going to stop running and running from the literal sense from the law, but also running from, you know, maybe some difficult things in the reality of adult life as well. But I don't know. I really love this movie. I'm a big, big fan. Had a blast re-watching it. There is a lot to appreciate behind the camera work and with the performances throughout. Uh, did you enjoy this movie? Did you have fun reacting along with me? I know this wasn't my first time watching. A lot of people probably won't watch because of that, but... I just want to check this movie out while I'm doing this run of Spielberg reactions. As always, the full reaction is out on Patreon. And next week, I'll have another Spielberg movie reaction out as well. Thank you to everyone for watching along. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.